There are 11 million RVs owned in the U.S. alone and at least 10 different ways that you can use them. Some may surprise you. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Maureen. I'm Gary. And today we're going to go into all the different ways that people use their RVs. And most people just think of maybe, maybe a couple at the most, but we came up with at least 10. And maybe you'll think of some more that you could add to the list. We live in a fifth wheel RV, and we've been traveling full time for four and a half years. We're in our fifth year of traveling. And we have, actually we're a combination of a couple of these and we'll share that at the end. So let's get started with the very first one, occasional use. These are people who have full-time residence. They have a permanent home. They use their RVs mainly for vacations. And then they'll maybe take them to a sporting event or a, mm. a dog show or a horse show or something like that. They're not using them all the time. It's just an occasional thing. And this is actually the way RVs and campers were originally designed to be used. But we came up with about nine other ways that people use their RVs. First one we thought of was seasonal use. Some people have a, a campsite at a campground where they stay, or an RV park, where they stay all winter or all summer, depending on where you are. If you're up north, you maybe have a seasonal setup at a campground, uh, maybe on the lake or something like that. So it's kind of like you're going to the cabin or to the the cottage or whatever for the for a weekend and then they just leave it set up there all the time um, in the winter time you all know about snowbirds and those are people that will go south for the winter a lot of people stay at the same resort every winter um, and then they some some people leave them there in the mm -hmm. in the north they have to winterize them if they're going to keep them there no matter what if whether they put them in storage or they keep them on their site at the at the campground and in the south a lot of times people do the same thing so that's what we call a seasonal they're only there for a season or two third way that we thought of was using a RV as a temporary place. That could be somebody who's trying to save up enough money to buy a place of their own. It could be someone who's lost a home in a fire, a flood, or something like that, and need a temporary place to live until they can rebuild or restore their home. Some people are in the process of maybe they bought an old house and they're remodeling it and they're living in their RV during that time. Uh, you know, when you think about how much rent is, especially now, it's very hard finding affordable housing. And um, our little neighbors next door to us at the park here have been living here for three years and they're saving up their money to buy their own place because the rent is less than $800 a month. And that includes everything except electric. Really, when you think about paying $1,700 or $2,000 a month for rent, depending on where you live, and $800 a month here is pretty high compared to other places where it might only be four or $500 a month for the same amenities. That's a lot cheaper than renting a, an apartment or whatever if you're saving up money to buy a house. Another example of being a temporary is if you are going through cancer treatments or some kind of medical need that you have to be going to a hospital, a hospital a lot, is that you may temporarily choose to live in an RV instead of in a hotel or renting a house. That's another way that people use them temporarily. The fourth one is work-related. Some people live in an RV because of their work. They, instead of staying in hotels as they keep moving from job to job to job, they live in their RV and just go from one RV campground or whatever to another. For examples would be pipe fitters, um, insurance adjusters, 
with traveling doctors and nurses. We've met quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. Some people that are working for the oil companies, they're being moved around from job to job and they just take their RV with them, they take their home with them. And a lot of times, oftentimes, their family goes with them too. And then the families get to see different parts of the country, they get homeschooled, and they are all together as a family instead of the mom or dad traveling to the different jobs and then coming home and spending less time with their family. So it's a great option. There's a, there are those who uh, prefer to have a, a home for their families in a neighborhood and they will get an RV that they can use as their home away from home uh, so they can uh, still have a home base and maybe occasionally take their families but they they have the option of keeping their families in the same school district if that's a concern and then they can just use their RV as instead of a motel or hotel along the way and, and I know a number of them get uh, per diem from their companies to work in a different location so they can put that towards their rent and virtually stay in a place uh, with no money out of their own pocket. The next one we have is full time. Full time is living in the RV full time and they don't have a home base anywhere. They just live in their RV all the time. Many of them have sold their homes. They sold most of their possessions. They might have some things in a storage or something somewhere, but for the most part, they've sold almost everything and they just live in the RV. It's not just retired people that do that. And we hear that so often. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I retire, that's what we want to do. But there's a lot of young families that do this too. And a lot of single people that are doing this, young single people. It's uh, a, an option to travel and see the country and 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 then you work remotely which so many people are doing now anyway that a lot of them started working from home and now they found hey I can travel and still keep working my same job so they are kind of combining the two into one you know the the time with the family the working remotely and seeing the country and the kids are getting educated firsthand by going to some of the places, the historical places where things took place in our country and all, even in other countries too, instead of just learning about it in a textbook. It's really an awesome way to bring up your family and to travel and to still keep working. And you might like it so much that after your family grows up and goes off on their own RV trips, or locations, uh, you may want to be empty nesters on the road, just enjoying what you've enjoyed with the family. But they are not retired yet. They're still working full time, just remotely. And so that is a big option. We know several people right here in the RV park where we're at right now that are doing that. They are working, they're empty nesters, and well, they do have dogs. Most of them have dogs, yeah, most of them are, but they, yeah. they are working, still working full-time remotely, and that's kind of a cool thing, but then they'll move on to another place and keep their same job. Next, we came up with full-time seasonal work. So this case, you are going to travel to wherever you want, not, I mean, kind of similar to what it was before, but there may be some limitations on working from home is that you may have to report into your um, office or um, the company you work for. You may have to report in from time to time. These are people, The next, this category now is the ones where they are choosing what they want to do for a job. So some people will work a seasonal job um, for the whole summer or the, or the fall or whatever, and they earn enough money that keeps them going for the rest of the year of just exploring. And they don't have to report into anything like uh, they're not working remotely online. They're just uh, doing different seasonal jobs. Some people will work in a campground, for instance, for national parks or state parks. And they will be tour guides. They'll be camp hosts. They will do all those kinds of um, seasonal things while they're there. And then sometimes they get their rent paid for. So they're staying at the campground or whatever, basically in exchange for the work that they're doing for that place. 
works out great for people who are retired or semi-retired or just people that want to work seasonally and have more time free. Yes, and we know some young people that are doing that too. They work all summer and make a lot of money doing different specialty kinds of jobs and then they have enough to live on for the rest of the year. This next category sounds kind of similar to other ones we've mentioned with a few exceptions. These are people who want to live in a community and neighborhood for little money, mm -hmm. or, or a, a smaller amount of money than what they normally would if they were renting or paying a mortgage. So these are people who have RVs that they maybe are not traveling as much anymore. They might pull out once in a while and do some traveling, but for the most part they're staying put. Maybe they've had their travel days, and they love their RV and their tiny home life so much that they're staying in their RV, in an RV community. We know some people here that have been here for several years. Well, um, the park that we were in last winter up in Tyler, Texas, that one, uh, there were some people that were there for eight or nine years. And that's just, that's their home. They don't go anyplace else. Who else lives there? Um, people that are working in the area, and that's they just choose to do that instead of living in an apartment or buying a house. College students, instead of living in a dorm, Younger families that can't afford mortgages or rent if they have several children. It is surprising how many people you can fit into an RV if you have to. And uh, there are some that, some RVs have bunk beds in them. Some have um, a bunk house kind of room in the back where they have room for four kids. Uh, they, it's, you know, they, there's a lot of options for RVs. In our last video, we talked about toy haulers and how a lot of times they have extra sleeping room and that some people use that as a spare room for guests but some of them use it for just having bigger families too. It's one of those uh, uh, categories that we had not really thought of much when we first got into our RVing experiences and uh, when we settled down into an RV park last year some of the people that we met had been there for several years as Orlean mentioned and was fascinated that there are so many who have an RV delivered to the site and they don't have any way of moving it without hiring someone to do mm -hmm. so uh, with the intention that that's where they're going to live and they commute to work or they just retire there. Yep. So if you don't have a pickup to haul one and you want to live in a community, that's an option of how you can do it. And the community thing was really a uh, desirable. We enjoyed that yep. a lot last year. We enjoy it this year. Yep. It, it's uh it's nice. This is called an RV resort that we're in this year. Last year it was just an RV park. Um, we'll maybe cover that in another, RV, in another video. Um, but in this one, there are laundry facilities here. They have Wi-Fi, they have um, game rooms sometimes, some have a pool, some have other activities that you can do. They have group things for the people in the campground or the resort to get together for different socials and things like that. And this one has free popcorn. <laughs> that has made it worth it right there. The only problem with this is the size of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> that is fresh. This is about the time of day a lot of people start coming in. <laughs> Thank you. This is one that we actually considered ourselves. This is where you buy some property and you have a full hookup for your RV on the property and you can come and go as you want but it's your home base maybe it's because of a health reasons you have to take a break from traveling for a while but you want to stay in your rv and um, not be staying in hotels or staying with family or something like that you can stay in your own home and, and while you're doing that maybe it's because grandma and grandpa are are settled somewhere in the area and you're bringing the grandkids back from time to time to visit uh, and spend holidays and things like that with them. So they will install uh, blacktop or cement or something like that on that piece of property 
and then have all the hookups that they need, including Wi-Fi and things like mm -hmm. that too. And then they just come and go and do their traveling for a while and then they come back. There is one catch. There might be more than one, but one that is a serious one is uh, zoning laws. Uh, requirements that you may have to put up a permanent structure that would not allow, or an HOA or something like that, might not allow you to park an RV that you live in on that site. So check out the laws and restrictions. Make sure that it's legal so you don't go through a lot of expense and effort only to have to abandon ship. So. Um, you know, we've, we've teased our kids that, hey, we could just park in your backyard <laughs> and then just come and go as we please, but we could just do that instead of their driveway once in a while. Granny pods or whatever, those, oh, those little yeah. tiny houses that they, that they have sometimes in the backyard for grandparents to live in with, on their kids' property. With an RV, there may be a different story to that, so you have to watch out for that. But, it's, but that's a case where somebody else owns the property and is allowing you to live on their property with, uh, with full hookup. We haven't convinced our kids yet. <laughs>may surprise some of you if you're not a follower of some of these kinds of channels on YouTube like we are. Van life and car life. Some people make a minivan into their permanent dwelling. Some people make a car into their permanent dwelling. And there are a variety of reasons why they do it. In some cases it's because maybe they're homeless and that's the vehicle they had ha on hand and they just made it work for them to be able to live in that full time. Sometimes it's a case of just having a, an adventurous spirit and just wanting not to be tied down to anything or property or anything like that. And they just want to be able to travel all the time, but they don't have the money to buy a full fledged RV, like a travel trailer or um, a motor home. So they fix up a van or a, how, a car or some kind of vehicle that they can live in and just travel around and, and keep doing that. Maybe they're doing seasonal jobs, maybe to, you know, to fill in the gaps for income. Maybe they are um, going to school, like college, and they, instead of staying in a dorm, again, that's another, people do that. We heard one story of a, of a young gal who lived in an apartment with three other friends and the three friends all decided to up and leave and live elsewhere and do and once some got married and and so now here she was with this apartment and she couldn't afford to pay for it on her own and she was having a hard time finding something affordable so she decided to move into her car and she was worked at a place where she was able to take showers every day or some people will go they belong to a health club and they'll take their showers there every day and they're saving a pile of money. <laughs> of course, that's something that you would not be able to do if you were living in certain climates very easily. It would get pretty cold if you were doing that up north or really, really hot if you were doing it in the south, um, depending on the season. We've been fascinated, and I'm sure you would be too, when you start looking at what people have turned into their homes, oh. the kinds of vehicles that they modify and, and uh, make them very comfortable for them as best they can, uh, with the inconveniences, of course, of showers and bathrooms, that how do you deal with that? And they find ways. It's, it's amazing uh, what they come up with. Again, check out our last video because... We talked about different ways, that, um, different types of RVs, and, this, and the one that we're talking about right now is one of the ones we mentioned in that video and described it a little bit more. And then we'll also put a link to it at the end of this video. We used to have a, a conversion van, and this is before we started watching YouTube to see what people do to the vans to make them more livable, but we just called it our glorified tent on wheels, and we would always stay at campgrounds where we had bathroom facilities and things like that. Um, but we loved it. We were able to do so much really fun traveling with that, 
and um, it just basically was a bed and our some clothes and a cooler and it was very convenient for traveling around to various tourist sites because you could pull in anywhere and park anywhere a car would uh, mm -hmm. to go off road it was easier than doing it with an RV because it's not as heavy it's more maneuverable and get into smaller spaces yep. and get out again easier too yeah so there are a lot of reasons why people choose to live uh, in a van or a car. And the last one we came up with was the end of their days. <laughs> but they're being repurposed. So some RVs are just really beyond even being worth repairing anymore or whatever. And they'll be parked on somebody's property, uh, maybe for a hunting shack or cabin or something like that. And uh, they won't have any facilities, but it's a nice warm place for the guys or women to stay while they're hunting. And oh, Yeah, another one too is, is ice fishing. Yeah, we, we, uh, we come from up north, okay. <laughs> Wisconsin, Minnesota area. And in the wintertime, I've seen them repurposed for ice fishing shacks. Yeah, the smaller, the smaller yeah. travel trailers that they, they have a hole in the middle and <laughs> they use that. That's one way to repurpose them. Another way was we saw this in Texas, near Fredericksburg, Texas. There's a little community of vintage travel trailers and they are the cutest things. They're all the shorter ones with the wings and the whole thing and they're all different fun colors and each one has its own site with a picnic table and an awning and they have their little kitchen they have their full hookup they are in um, they have a bed and instead of staying in a hotel room or something like that or even a motel mm -hmm. it's it's just everybody has their own so it's a, it's like an airbnb <laughs> kind of thing with vintage trailers that is kind of a fun thing that people have done with rvs as well in conclusion this is um some of the ways that we came up with where people use RVs in a different way than maybe they were originally intended. Our original plan was to just travel all the time and see friends and family and visit for a while and then move on and see more friends and family and more of this country and just keep doing it that way. But God had other plans. <laughs> And that's uh, the very first year is what started Gary's uh, filling in vacancies. And so we've just been doing that every winter now. And preferably we do it in the south in the winter. So we're kind of seasonal that way. And then in the, in the summers we travel back up to Wisconsin and Minnesota to visit family and friends up there and spend most of our summers up there where it's cooler. So what, we, what we've learned is that this is a very flexible lifestyle <laughs> and that we can, we can start out with our own plans and intentions and it can easily adjust to whatever kind of lifestyle you want to have. Yep. Just go down the list of the 10 that we went through and uh, pick some place to start or modify what you're doing. It, it's really very, very flexible and it's been a, a treat. It's been a real good experience for us. There is one more I forgot about. You're going to love this one. Okay. Flipping. Some people will buy RVs, fix them all up, completely remodel the insides, and then flip them for a higher price for a profit, just like they do with houses and things like that. They do it with RVs. So flipping is one more way. That's a bonus. One, one big catch with that, though. If you plan on flipping something, you have to be flexible with that too because it's very possible that when you finish working on what you're going to flip, your spouse may decide not to. <laughs> yeah. He keeps talking about wanting to get a different RV uh, from time to time. And I'm like, but we put so much work into this and I love it. And, and it's our home, so I don't really <laughs> want to... to we're not quite that flexible yet. We'll see what comes. <laughs> well, and we've talked about becoming van dwellers. We've talked about becoming going smaller. We rarely talk about going bigger. So, anyway. We live in 180 <laughs> square feet, and we love it. <laughs> Do you have other ideas that you can think of, of how people 
use RVs? Are you doing something different? Do you have plans for doing something different um, with an RV than what we've mentioned already? Let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by just clicking that red button down below. You can leave a comment by just clicking on the comment section and then an opening comes up for you to leave your own comment. We love hearing from you. Also check out our Facebook page, Roads of Faith. We put different things on there than we do on our YouTube channel. And some of them are recipes, some of them are places we've been that I just didn't make a film out of it. I just did pictures. So there's a lot to see on there too. And until next time, God, God bless. bless.